Hello from Avanti West Coast. Just leaving Milton Keynes. Yeah. Um, what have we been doing today? We're going to listen to a train announcement. <laughs> no, no, just thinking that. Just in case you wonder where we are. Calling it London Euston only. So we're. see something that doesn't look right, speak to staff or text British Transport Police on 61016. We'll sort it. See it? Say it. Say it. Sorted. Sorted. <laughs> now, so now we all know the number. Yes. <laughs> we're on the way back from Network Rail at Milton Keynes. So that was interesting. What were we at Network Rail about? Well, first of all, we had to get a taxi there because the train had broken, <laughs> actually. <laughs> so our train adventures were, again, funny. Uh, we were at Network Rail to talk about Rail Innovation Group's Startup Rail program. So for anyone who doesn't know, that is our outreach program to find new suppliers around the country um, and welcome in and welcome, encourage them into the rail sector. So... Startup Rail's national program. What um, give us a bit more detail about what 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 you mean by the national program? Okay, so it's very difficult to gesticulate while holding a microphone and my phone, but I'll try my best. Uh, we did we have done two events last year um, in Newcastle and Bristol with Hitachi Rail, and then this year we've done already Liverpool and we've got Sheffield and Glasgow. Manchester, Birmingham, Belfast, Brighton, maybe Norwich. Where am I forgetting? In the rail supply chain, currently, we procure products, services, and innovation, with inverted commas, um, centrally. And we say, we're looking for these solutions. What we don't do is go out to tech communities and say, what are you working on? Maybe we could change it a little bit to meet our challenges, our needs. Um, and we certainly physically don't I don't think we put ourselves out in that environment to go and find those companies. So one of the things we do is we go to quite obscure co-working places in um, some of the places. In Liverpool, we were above an old pub that was also a button factory um, behind the station. And it's to go into the environment that tech companies are working in um, and reach out to them and say, what are you working on? Um, that sounds quite interesting. Have you ever thought about rail? Generally not. Why not? because you don't know anything about it. So we do a bit of a workshop session, half day session, um, to explain the opportunities in rail, the quirks of it, the landscape, the incentives, the people already in the market, success stories, um, and challenges. And also, if you are going to consider supplying to rail, who are you trying to sell to? So most, most non-rail people think they're selling to train companies, but actually, most of the time, the people who want to buy your products. And I think that's oh, really no. interesting because, um, sort of like some of our partners that we speak to, quite often say they have um, lots of companies coming to them, or they go to a conference and they see a great idea. Because yeah. it's not necessarily solving the problem they have. So, no. why do you think that's important that we're targeting markets where they can actually solve actual real life problems? Uh, why is it important? Because that's how you're going to get. Uh, new ideas into the sector is by uh, meeting business challenges. So the, the buyer obviously has a challenge and you, you need to be selling what the buyer wants. And the mismatch in the rail sector, actually all transport sector, is that the, the people who use the service don't see what's going on behind the scenes. So they don't really know whose problem it is. For example, yeah. I don't know, the toilets beside us are probably horrible at the moment because it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Actually, they weren't too but, bad. Oh, right, <laughs> impressive. <laughs> but that's probably a cleaning company's uh, problem, or a train manufacturer's problem, is how you develop a better toilet, not the train operator's company, train operator company. But see, that's interesting yeah. in itself, isn't it? Because it's you know, within the supply chain, who, who owns the customer? Yeah. Who does own the customer? <laughs> who did you buy your ticket from today? Um, my favourite website. Okay, <laughs> I bought mine for the ticket office and not somehow got it for £10 cheaper. Ticket okay. machine. <laughs> but I guess on the plus side, I will be claiming that back on delay repay because of the delays. That is very true, because we had to get a taxi. <laughs> That's true. But anyway, back to um, Startup, Startup rail. rail. What happened at our launch? 
Right, so on the, at the end of January, we um, were at Fujitsu um, on Baker Street at their head office in London. And we, um, as Liam said, we launched um, Startup Rail. And we were very lucky to, um, to have as our keynote speaker to assist us with the launch, Nadeem Sahawi, the Business and Innovation Minister. I think that's right, isn't it? Uh, Minister of Business and Industry. Minister of Business and Industry, who was very supporting of of the launch of Startup Rail because he saw the importance of um, of Startup Rail to um, bringing in diversity, as as we've already spoken about. Yeah. Um, nurturing a culture of innovation um, to meeting. Um, the rail sector deal, and also because we were specifically talking as well about um, in a translator this year, the importance of getting um, UK SMEs and startups ready for exports as well. So we we touched on that topic as well. Yeah, topics of the day. Topics of the day, and yeah. and it was really well attended. We had a, I mean, we did have a really good diverse people. Um, invitee list, you know, that were from the supply chain, maybe from YRP. Um, yeah, we're professionals. Who else did we have there? What other train operators? Train operators, people from Narrow Rail, um, people from government and wider industry. I think it was really well attended. Yeah, and I think as much as anything, people may, I've heard that people made some really useful connections. Mm. So, yeah, I think that's one of the things that, you know, whilst we have our own outcomes that we're seeking to achieve through our events. What they also do is they also provide a community and opportunities for other people who, are, because because we're building such a diverse, organic community of people, yeah. that actually we're throwing people together that wouldn't necessarily meet in normal everyday life or normal you know events that are held in yeah, the yeah. industry. So I, I like that, that. Yeah, I really like that as well because I think some from sort of like some people that attend. I've I've heard some really interesting things that might come out of it. You know that you just wouldn't have, you know thought of you know, before. You know, just like delightful connections. Yeah, and delightful cake because and you also made cake. some cakes I, for I us. I did. Yes, <laughs> they were startup rail cakes. Which are very tasty. Um, links on the website if you want to see the recipe. I'm sure. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should do a podcast on a recipe, <laughs> on the brownies that I did, the startup brownies. Yeah, they were tasty. Because they were very tasty, I quite like mm. those. Um, startup startup rail. rail. Um, so you said done three events so far. Yep. Um, and mentioned as part of the format, we talk about success stories. So what successes have there been so far? Because I think we've met some interesting companies and they're already doing business within the rail sector, aren't they? Yeah. There is one company that we met in Bristol um, within days of them pitching to the Startup Rail event. They then had meetings with, I think, Transport for Wales and with Narrow Rail um, for their, because their solution was spot on to solve a problem and save a huge amount of money um, in uh, maintenance for Narrow Rail. Um, we've also had, well, quite interestingly, it hasn't, the commercials haven't been done yet, but we had came across a company in Liverpool two weeks ago. What what they were working on was so far out, so far beyond where we thought we should be with additive manufacturing. It was so out there, and we were like, "Oh my! How have we not thought about this already?" So but, obviously, the people there snapped them up. <laughs> but that has come about because it was in a what, in a random pub in Liverpool. Yes. Not, well, not random. It was uh, you know articulated that that was where the event would be, but yeah. nobody would have found that if you hadn't have had that event on that day. No, not at all. And uh, it's sort of irrespective of where this company gets into the rail supply chain. But now we are thinking about this next level of technology provision and integration into the rail sector. So in our engagement, we've already said you need to be thinking about this. Because mm. other companies are going to be doing it, so why why isn't this? A, why if isn't other people rail? are making these cost savings, why aren't yeah. we? So, yeah. what's also I think um, interesting, not just in the fact that something delightful has been found that you weren't expected, but also about um, what is really important. This problem is that more diversity is coming into rail. Very much so, because when you go to a tech community, it just by nature is more diverse. It doesn't look the same as most. Transport events. 
the people there are different, the thoughts are different, the life experience is different, the age is probably a bit younger, um, the clothing is very different. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You can still go out the Monster Munch and the Curly Whirlies, obviously. Um, yeah, it's just it's a whole different creative feel, um, which is how these ideas and why bounce do you around. I think that is valuable to Rail that we bring in that bi diversity and creativity and bring that sort of like agile vibe thinking. Because it's one of the targets of the rail sector deal, and most rail organisations want to diversify the supply chain and bring in new ideas. I think one of the things that the Rail Innovation Group the approach is that it, when you sit in an open plan office in a corporate headquarters, you don't, you don't think the same way as people working in startups and co-working offices, and it's very difficult to relate to how they work. So it's very difficult for you to then go out and reach out to them, because you don't really know where they are, you don't know how to talk to them, and you don't know how to attract them into your sector. So that's sort of the group, the area that we're the niche area that we are in is making that first connection and sort of grabbing so, so we're grabbing a gap in. that you yeah. know resource wise if you if you're a corporate or you're a train operator or even just in the supply chain you just don't have the capacity to fill that absolutely yes we're yeah. filling that gap and we're also helping with the rail sector deal and we're also helping with diversity and that. So we've got mm. two events coming up in March. So what's we'll the yeah. So, the so one, one is one of our startup rail yep. events. Yeah, Startup Rail Sheffield. Um, that's going to be hosted by 3 Squared, who is a company who is one of our founding members. Um, they are based in central Sheffield and they are moving into a new office. So we're going to be the first event in their new office. Uh, we're already engaging with, I think, Sheffield Digital and some of the other larger companies around there. And uh, where can people get tickets to come to the event or get an invite? Head to our website, railinnovationgroup.com. Everything's linked from there. And then our other and event then, on the 30th, which is going to be our next meetup. Yep, in London. That's uh, going to be in King's Cross, hosted by Arcadis. And we will be hearing from... Oh, should we just close that door? Oh. I've no idea what that rap thing is. Um, <laughs> the perils of doing it on a train. Uh, we are going to be, uh, sorry, that is um, about High Speed 2 and their innovation challenges. And I think they have an accelerator coming they up. They are. They're going to be, um, later this year, HS2 are going to be launching an accelerator. And as part of the event, you're going to hear from, from Howard, who is the head of innovation at HS2, about what the challenges are going to be. So um, hopefully, he's going to be showing us, sharing us some videos of what those are and their challenges that are mainly going to be surrounding around um, their construction challenges, health, safety, and environment. So that's going to be the theme, theme of the event. Oh, perfect. Environment, actually, you mentioned decarbonisation is rocketing up the ag agenda in all of these events. Everybody wants solutions. So if you have a solution to do with decarbonisation, um, I think you have a receptive audience everywhere for that. We also have an event, uh, 2nd of April, we have Startup Rail Glasgow. It's a busy month ahead, isn't it? Yes. Or is it just that March just feels like a short month? <laughs> it's longer than February. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it is quite long. Uh, quite a lot coming up. I'm also speaking at... So oh, we're both going to Boston as well. And we're going to Boston so we'll to, to speak a podcast at there. the Smart East conference there. Smart East. So that'll be the next podcast, I guess. Yes. What Boston. are you speaking about there? Um, I'm talking about the importance of developing the customer journey and how we transport plan. And part of what I'm exploring is why we don't use data to do transport planning and we still use lagging data because there is so much data available that we could probably do it smarter. And I think one of the things that I'm going to be exploring as part of that is um, why do we focus so much on point-to-point -point journeys rather than the fact that I start my journey from a location which may be my home and I go to an office or I have a destination in mind. I'm not travelling from bus stop to bus stop or train station to train station. Right. Well, at least you got to travel with me for half the journey <laughs> to Milton Keynes. Did you know there's a pop song for Milton Keynes? I didn't. Oh, Are you going to sing it? I'm not going to sing it, but if I find it when I edit this podcast, I'll put it on here now. You've never seen anyone like it. Central Milton.
Phantom King. 